So greetings everyone. So let's take a look at this task. So you are responsible for the site maintenance at a large manufacturer. One of the CNC machines is used for grinding of shims that are used as spacers on another assembly. The machine records the th final thickness of the shim, shim, I'll try that again, to make sure it is within allowed torrents. If it fails outside, sorry, if it falls outside of torrents, then the alarm is set and the machine stops. The data is also output to a database and this data is used as an aid to knowing if the machine is in need of maintenance. This is done by using standard deviation to identify when the parts produced are starting to move away from the ideal size, even though they are still within torrents. So what I'm saying is the, uh, they're still producing parts that are suitable that can be used for manufacturing, but the, the fact that they're starting to move away from the torrents um, by use of standard deviation revealing that, we can tell that the machine is getting near to a service. So that what it means is basically that the maintenance manager can, which is yourself, can decide to take the machine out of maintenance at an appropriate time. So maybe there's a holiday coming up, a holiday period, so they can uh, wait to do it then, rather than stopping the whole production. So the th thing that you're gonna be looking for, so as the manager responsible for this task, you will take the data from production for one day, find the standard deviation, and see if your results is within the benchmark maximum figure of 2.02, .02, where below is good and above is failure. Using the data in the table below, calculate the mean and then calculate the standard deviation by the use of suitable software. From the result, comment, comment on whether the CNC machine is due for maintenance. Please note that the data is available in electronic form on Moodle. So you've got the, you've been given the electronic form, the data, it's actually in Excel. Uh, you can use, for example, Excel, Microsoft Excel, LibreOffice Calc, or all these other uh, industrial standards pieces of software which I won't name. And there is the the data that you're going to be using. So this is a day's data, or a portion of a day maybe. Uh, the data may be a lot bigger than this, a lot uh, bigger in the sense of more numbers. That doesn't really matter, as you'll see using Excel. It doesn't really care about the size of the data. So there's the data and um, we're going to find out by use of Excel. Now standard deviation, if you remember or not, is a means to measure to a, a, a method where you can tell how far the data is spread out. So take for example, um, and it's a very relative term as well, I need to point out. So depends on the circumstances, what's good, what's bad. But say you've got two sets of results. The, um, they both could have the same mean, the same average value, but they could have a different dis, um, spread of data. So one, for example, could have more extreme values, higher than lower values, such as a machine, for the example, that's starting to need maintenance. So the bearings are getting worn and it's getting a bit more erratic in its precision. So a tighter standard deviation would usually be considered a good thing. Again, it does depend on circumstances. And that's where human judgment comes in. In this example, it tells us if the machine's getting, starting to get a bit worn. If we see the standard deviation getting bigger, spreading more from the further away from the mean value. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, now finding standard deviation is quite tricky. Let me just get up an example of the equation. So if we look at this, let's get so I can see it. Okay, I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller. Okay, that's better. So on this here, this PDF, we've got the formula that you would have to use. And as you can see, it's, um, it's great, it takes a lot of work, and I'm gonna, I'll just go into this a bit further. This part of the formula here, this is in the formula here, X bar, and X bar is just purely the mean. So this figure, this is sigma, this means a sum, F is for the frequency, X is your values, 
so the values of data that you've collected uh, how many times that individual piece of data occurs is the frequency so you don't have to add up you know that the mean is you add up all the scores together and then divide by the number which is what the n is there so if you've got 100 pieces of data you divide by 100 so this is this is how you'd find the mean uh, you're all familiar with this i'm sure now this part of the equation here this x is the value how far is that x moved from the uh, from the mean so what's the spread of data there and then you'd square that and then you'd multiply it by the frequency how many times that actually occurs that value then you'd sum them all together then you divide by the number of them and then you'd square root to get rid of the basic of the square than you've done before and this is this is small s a small sigma symbol in the greek letter sigma and this is what we use for standard deviation and here's an example of some data it's been done on so you can see what we'd have to do. So if these are the X values, the value, possible values. This is how many times each one occurs. So for example, there's no sevens. Um, the, the shift from the, so you'd have to multiply the value X by the frequency. And then you get your total, divide by the 100, that would give you the mean value, which is what's happened here. So the mean is 12.09, as you can see, 12. 1,209 divided by 100 is 12.9. Then you'd have to calculate. So this is the manual way of doing it is what I'm getting at here. And as you can see, it's quite long-winded. You can imagine doing this with thousands and thousands of pieces of data, filling in a table like this, averaging, uh, finding the um, the total there, which would give you this all this bit that's inside here uh, on the top line, then divide by N, and then do the square root and that would give you the standard deviation which is 1.98 in this particular example okay so quite long-winded with this data but imagine doing it with thousands and pieces of data so this is where excel comes into its own so what i'm going to show you how to do it in else in excel is so easy it, uh, as is finding the the mean it's so easy that it's um, it's ridiculous really let's have a look so going back to my other screen I figured out which one it is so going back to my other screen okay when I find it here we go so I've got my data there that's the data we're going to use for that example so if I now find me Excel spreadsheet so here we are on the Excel spreadsheet and you can see I've got all the data there so firstly the first question it asks you to do is find the mean so the thing to do is when you do the if you're doing this as an assignment question for example you'd have to go into a bit more detail about what we're actually going to do now so write some comments in but let's as a starting point let me just write a definition here mean and then in this cell i'll actually put the mean in and what you could do of course is dress dress all this up with a bit of uh put some borders around things and this kind of thing but anyway the mean to find the mean which it means the average it's very simple it's a formula in excel and when you're doing any formulas in Excel, they always begin with an equal sign. So equals, and you can see it occurs here in the formula bar. Uh, very simple to find the mean. A, V, E, R, A, G, E. You'll see as you type it in, it gives you some clues. Open bracket. Then it starts to give you a bit more of the formula. So all the numbers basically. So all we do with the mouse is select the required data like that and you'll see it's populated it b2 colon to k13 so that means all that data is selected close it off with the end of the bracket or just simply hit enter and a presto there's the there's the answer the mean to this data is 500.042 so we've got values ranging from uh, let's have a look 497 
can't see anything smaller but they possibly could be up to 504 there okay so the average of all that data the mean is 500 so what you would you could do is uh, just tart this up with a bolt bold around it border around it the outside like that and then we'll do underneath the standard deviation for the assignment you would have to define you could maybe put a text box in and write what the formula is that you used the average equals average etc just describe the steps so for this bit standard deviation again it's a formula so again we hit, hit the equals whoops not on here I'm not going to do it here and I'm going to write standard uh, I won't write it all in because it's a bit short so I'll just do the formula that's used in Excel nearly okay so the formula is so equals and the formula there's a few formulas for standard deviation the one we're going to use is this S T D E V you'll see the suggestions here dot P what that means is that's the formula for population that means you're using all the available data we're not sampling in other words so there's slightly different formula for sampling to make allowance of the fact it doesn't take into account every piece of data um, this formula is is the whole lot the whole population and we're going to use all their numbers in here okay so again open bracket then it's telling you again to select the numbers and it's just like last time select all the required data again it populates it b2 colon k13 again just hit the enter 2.03468 so that there as you can see is a very very easy way to find the standard deviation you saw on the table doing it manually how painful that would be you can imagine doing it with thousands of pieces of data hundreds of thousands of pieces of data Excel doesn't really care it makes maybe makes it a few microseconds slower to do the calculation that's about it really uh, and same with any other software that you may use so if we just put a bold uh, a thick border around that so it looks like that obviously save it stick a text box in describe what you've done let's do an insert text box um, somewhere around here lost it can't see for looking actually um, pictures online pictures lost it it does exist somewhere text box there we are under my nose so put a text box in write some data how about how you did it how you found everything maybe put this underneath here maybe give that a thick uh, border around the edge as well and, and there you go done job done so if we go back and have a look at our question on the other sheet and see if this standard deviation is with is outside of the requirements let's have a look so if you remember going back to our question find the standard deviation and see if your result is within the benchmark maximum figure of 2.02 or 2.034 or 2.04 if we take it to two decimal places is greater than that so it's due the machine's due for maintenance is that all it says so the parts being produced are still within tolerance so it can continue to produce them and as the site manager you can wait for an appropriate time to put the machine into into some maintenance into a service and that's one of the uses of it that's one of the uses of standard deviation okay thank you